Hello, uh, welcome for those who are new in the room. Um, we have three magnificent people up front in the, in the room. We have Ramya, Willy and Felix. And they're the team from the humanitarian open street map team who are uh, working on the tasking manager. Who of you have used the tasking manager? Okay, so you know kind of what we're talking about. Um, so they're going to tell us about uh, the new developments for the tasking manager. So let's see what that brings. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm Ramya, a developer with Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team, in short, HOT. So with me are my colleagues, Willy and Felix. Together, we are going to talk about our tool, Tasking Manager, the journey so far, and what lies ahead. So about Tasking Manager, it's a web tool that's used for organized editing on OpenStreetMap. The idea is that if someone like a humanitarian group wants to map out a certain geography on OpenStreetMap, they could get on the tasking manager, divide the area into like a series of blocks, which different volunteers can then claim and work on. This shows everyone like how much progress they have made as a team and as an individual, and also make sure that multiple people don't edit the same area at the, the same place at the same time, which otherwise would lead to like confusions or errors. Uh, the tool login is tied up with the OpenStreetMap username. So once you create like an OpenStreetMap account, you're all set to contribute to any projects within the tasking manager worldwide. So within the tasking manager, there are like list of mapping projects, and each project has specific instructions on how to contribute. Uh, what kind of data uh, the project requires, the imagery availability, skill requirement for the mappers, uh, the boundary for the projects, and the priority areas that has to be mapped first within the project. And also, each project, uh, the area is divided into like smaller tasks, and contributors can choose a task within the project that is free and contribute according to the instructions provided within the project. Only one person can work on a task at a given point of time. The task is autom uh, automatically unlocked after two hours. And all the contributions uh, are made on like OpenStreetMap. And uh, the edits are made using the OSM editing tools. The mappers usually spend most of the time mapping on these editing tools rather than the tasking manager itself. And all the OSM chain sets uh, from the tasking manager, uh, they, have the, they have the annotation with the hot specific tags. Uh, which means like hot contributions can be identified later in the OSM edit history. I want to walk you through the workflow. The workflow is generally in three stages within the tasking manager. First is the project creation, then the data generation, and finally is the quality check, which we term as the validation. And each of this stage is handled by mappers with different roles. Based on the project involvement and the mapping experience, different roles are assigned to mappers. Um, for example, there is a project manager who sets up projects to address particular information needs. Uh, and this project could be anything. It could be to map out buildings uh, that aids humanitarians to understand the population distribution. Or it could be to trace uh, roads that help teams uh, to plan transport routes. And a larger hot activation can consist of multiple individual projects. A mapper in the second stage maps from the satellite imagery of remote places. And in some cases, regional groups host mapathons to come together in a more social setting. But mostly, like people get online like, and do the participation remote. The third stage, the quality check stage, is handled by a validator. A validator has to make sure that each, each task within the project uh, fulfills all the mapping goals per the instructions, and all the data added is qualitatively good. Usually, most senior mappers get to do the validation, but based on geography and the nature of the project, uh, local mappers could be the validators because they have the knowledge of the respect area and they augment the maps by adding more detailed annotations. Um, and they also like, make corrections, ground truthing the data. Um, on the software side, um, we have the back end built with Python Flask framework. The front end is currently on AngularJS. Uh, we are working to port it to React. Uh, Willie would be talking about it later uh, when he talks about redesign. Uh, the code is free and open source. It's hosted on GitHub. Uh, and yeah, and now I hand it over to Felix to talk through the history. Thank you, Ramya. Um, the main and largest instance of the tasking manager is the hot tasking manager, where um, it includes over 100 organizations, and they have created over 6,000 projects. 
with um, over 180,000 mappers mapping um, or contributing to an area of 33 million square kilometers, which um, corresponds to the home of 80 million people. The generated data has been downloaded by humanitarian organizations um, around 34,000 times. But the tasking manager is also used by many communities around the world, from Colombia to the Philippines, um, in Switzerland, in India, um, in projects like Open Historical Map and the Francophone Libre. Um, all of them and many more are using the tasking manager to um, map for their own purposes and with their own ideas. But also professional mapping teams rely at large at the tasking manager. Um, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Maxer, Development Seed, and many others are using the tasking manager for coordinating the work of their teams. A lot of them have taken the tasking manager and extended them and created additional functionality on the site. And over the last year, we have been working um, with them on getting their changes into the main tasking manager again. Um, and it's still an ongoing journey, but it's great to see that an open source community is emerging around the software. Um, let's go quickly back into the history. So the idea of the tasking manager was um, started around 2017, uh, 2007, sorry. And um, at that time, it was more thought as a quality assurance tool and had names like Quality Street Map or OSM QA. In 2010, um, the tasking manager, as it is um, today, it was planned. And in 2011, the first release um, happened. Um, the development at that time had been led by Pierre Giron with HOT and together with a company called camp to camp Soon after, um, Pierre voluntarily led further development of the tasking manager and included the start of a new version, um, a more stable version too, um, which got released in 2014. The scope was to review the data model, do basic things like post-GIS support and the ability for translating the UI so we can use it in an international context. Um, improve the workflow and the performance based on the experiences um, they've had from version 1. Um, the version 2 became widely used tool and not only within HOT but within the OSM communities too and um, actually today still many instances are running on version 2 but we are working on it to change that. <laughs> Version 3 was, com was a complete rewrite with the main focus on improving mapper engagement, so making communication between mappers um, possible um, and allowing to provide feedback um, for new OSM contributors, easing up the validation workflow to help identify new contributors and give them feedback about the re review of the contributor data. Um, and um, it, was, it was looked at the project creation and management workflow that hasn't been tackled so much in the, in the past, in the previous versions. And the infrastructure got um, re-architected to become scalable and also to allow um, contributions to become easier. The development for version 3 was led by Blake Girardot and Thinkware, a company from Scotland, and the version 3 was released two years ago. So when we wanted to go into the fourth version of the tasking manager, um, we kicked off the work together with a design studio major from Lisbon and um, conducted a deeper research around the TM user experience. And um, we wanted to design a new user interface and we looked at the part that make it really difficult for users to continue or to understand what they're doing. We started performing a usability analysis where we looked at individual pages and flows to understand how easy they are to use and if they follow best practices and standards and if they ultimately help users to achieve their goals. We looked at um, heuristics like the visibility of the system status, user control and freedom and also the aesthetics in order to look for improvement points. Our key findings were um, there's a lack of system feedback and error prevention. So a lot of time actually people don't necessarily know why certain things are not working. Um, a lack of affordance and content overload, especially in project pages when presented to new mappers, obviously because the tool was built um, 
from more experienced mappers and looking at the way how new mappers are using it gave a lot of insights in that way. And we saw that there were actually many bottoms competing to, um, um, each other and making it harder for users to know what they actually should click next. So um, I'm going to hand it over now to Willy to um, present the um, concrete results from our, from our um, study and how the redesign could look like. So, uh, we are rebuilding the front end with a new framework. However, our goal is not just to make a technical change. Our goal is to provide a better experience for the users and make it easy, make the mapping of workflow easy. Uh, one of the things that we'll notice is that a beginner map will need a, no a smaller number of clicks to start mapping. And we also are improving the communication notification features in order to provide more feedback to the users, and that way you can keep the users more engaged to map. That is part of the new home page. The new, fr the new front end will be easily custom customizable by other organizations that want to use Task Manager. Just setting some configurations and editing a stale file, you can change things like the logo of the organization, the colors, uh, change the name, URLs of the organization that maintains that instance. So it will be very easy to, to other parties to, to use Task Manager. We, the new design is more centered on the user. Uh, after the user ha do the registration, they will be directed to a page like that, that uh, will ask the user for some information. Uh, we have on that part some interest calls that uh, the user wants to, to, to contribute. Uh, for example, environment or refugees. And we have some more settings on that part as well. And after the user sets some preference, they will be directed to a new page that we use to just some projects that are related to, to the cause that interest the user. So we will, like, don't, don't let the user uh, alone on the system, but uh, have a workflow that he can follow to start contributing. Another change that we are making uh, are about the maps. We are updating the maps to use vector tiles. That is a new technology, and it, it works faster, and we can improve the, the styles of the map as well. The ID editor is being integrated in, on Task Manager. That way, the user don't need to like, uh, go away from Task Manager to another website. And so all the way mapping workflow can be done inside Task Manager. And after they use that maps and save the, the chain set, uh, he can like mark the task as done. The API will be updated to, ver to the version two uh, in order to provide a better performance, uh, make the page loaded faster, and make it e more easier, easier to use by other developers. Now we want to highlight some histories about Task Manager. The first history is about collaboration. As Felix mentioned, uh, the idea behind Task Manager dates from 2007. Uh, some solutions were proposed with different names, different approaches, to try to solve that problem of how to distribute mapping effort around an area. So both the idea and the software itself was a result of collaboration between opposite map users. So until one year ago, HOT didn't have a tech team, and most of our tools development were done by volunteers or by contractors or companies hired by HOT. So we, we didn't have knowledge about, no lot knowledge about task manager inside HOT. So more or less one year ago, the tech team from HOT started to be built, and we have now our staff dedicated to maintain and improve Task Manager, so we have now no knowledge about Task Manager inside HOT 
to lead it to a new, to a next level. We work with collaboration, uh, in collaboration with companies and organizations that use and collaborate to task manager development. We have a bi-weekly meeting where, like we discussed, the future of task manager. You can join those meetings. Uh, and we invite you to also collaborate with us, giving feedback, writing code, testing it, documentation, with documentation or translation. So now, Raymond will talk about the second history. Yeah, uh, so before we get further into the user-centric design, uh, I want to show you uh, how do you use the API documentation to extract individual stats uh, from the tasking manager, to know like how much you have contributed to the tasking manager. Say you want to learn more about the average mapping time uh, for all the contributions that you've made on the tasking manager. Uh, you could visit the API documentation site, uh, from the link there, and you and you'll see like a list of operations uh, that let you like talk to the database. Um, and you, you, you have to like scroll down to the user section, uh, select the user statistics. From there, you have to click on explicitly trying out the option, uh, the operation, key in your username, and execute to see the result. Uh, here, this would return like total time you have spent on mapping, validation, and your project sum up. Uh, all the time fields are returned in seconds, and project counts are absolute values. Now, with these data points, uh, you reach the average for mapping, validation, and overall contribution in the tasking manager. Or otherwise, if you have the URL handy, you could also append the username directly to the endpoint, just like how we have mine appended there, uh, and fetch data for any external use cases that you would like to do. Uh, and this is just one endpoint showing your individual contributions. We also provide summary statistics for the global instance and project-based statistics uh, for each of the mapper. And all these endpoints also feed into Hot OSM's website's uh, project and country pages. Uh, as part of redesign, we'll also add in more data points to better understand the impact each mapper brings in to the individual mapping projects. What do you, Felix, for the user-centric design? So um, one of the things we realized is, um, oh, where have all the mappers gone? Because a lot of them are there, but um, they not necessarily um, start mapping. So we realized that half of them um, were not doing even one task um, after signing up. And we wondered why this is happening. And um, we, we discovered several things um, that made it hard, as, as Willie was also explaining, um, jumping out to another editor is hard and then coming back actively, so it's not like part of a real user flow. Um, in this way, we, um, here you can see in the back like the difficulties on that. Um, so we, so we thought about how we can improve that and the ID integration is definitely one of the like big steps that we want to do here so people can map within the, within the tasking manager and then don't have to know that they have to go back. Um, but another thing that um, I want to highlight here is, and, and I think this is also like one of the interesting um, results from a discussion in the Hot Summit a couple of days ago, that um, actually the, the um, simple binary yes, no of invalidation and validation of saying this is good or this is bad might be not, not enough. And we are more looking into having something like coaching so that new mappers have actually more possibilities of going back and forth with more experienced mappers. Um, so one of the things we introduced was um, at least getting the collecting the email addresses so people will get notifications and will get messages that others are sending to them. Um, and this has been already part of version 3. Um, but almost nobody took advantage of it and 98% of, of the mappers actually didn't. So recently we enforced this, um, so all people have to give their email address if they want to map on the tasking manager because we see this as a place for interaction, for becoming better mappers and not just a place that uh, a tool where anonymously a yes and a no happens. Um, so, um, so yeah, with the new redesign, um, this user flow will be a little bit more seeming less, so people will sign up first with their email address, and um, yeah, we are constantly improving on making sure that people can talk to each other. 
Um, the Tasking Manager is becoming a living open source community and it's really about all of us. Um, you're welcome to participate and there are many ways of doing so. Um, testing, writing user documentation, translating is a great support, especially for the new version that is going to be um, ready in a, in, a, in a few weeks. We really need your help. So please follow the links if you want to help with one of those tasks and um, we will let you know when we are ready and need your help and like give some instructions on, on where to find um, and where, where, where to find things and give feedback. Um, and of course, developers are always more than welcome. We really want your code. Um, you can check the source code on GitHub and I encourage everyone who is, has more interest in the tasking manager to attend our working group meetings. Those are bi-weekly Wednesdays on 4 p.m. UTC and the next one is actually happening next Wednesday. So with this, I want to say thanks a lot and open up the floor for questions. Thanks a lot. Uh, wonderful presentation, interesting to see. Also the history is very nice to see. Um, yeah, questions from the room? Question over there. I think here. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am Pierre Belin, Pierre Zen. Uh, I did uh, co coordinate most of the major disasters uh, since 2012. A lot of experience with the tasking manager. What I've seen over the years, especially since 2015, a lot of Mapaton. It's a uh, the tasking manager is very good to escalate to have thousands of people. For Nepal, we had 8,000 people in a month and a million of problems. Uh, building, building is quite a problem. With ID, there's a lot of problems. Now you choose to even integrate it more with the tasking manager. Another aspect is uh, a lot of groups come, you, we know the project manager, I'm often project manager for a big uh, mission, but a lot of small groups organize m the Mapaton and they come and they use the task and we have no way to communicate with them. It's become a nightmare. La last year for Bitembo, Ebola outbreak, it was an emergency. We had to restart the job. And what we did, we, 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 we erased uh, the building that were added. The buildings were overlapped. It was overlapped over roads. People were moving one way, the other way. So we, we had to decide to, to only use the experience mappers. So very good to escalate, but not enough coordination and for, uh, tools, let's say, in the, in the tasking manager. Thank you, Pierre. Thanks for the comment, Pierre. Um, yeah, I think this is a tool and how it's getting used depends on how, yeah, what decisions people take. What we can do on the technical side is facilitate this communication that you're saying that is needed and that, that wasn't happened in the past and for exactly for this reason we included the possibilities for communication and making sure that there are email addresses and making sure that people can be contacted and if there are things like on editing that are not very well, at least we can like talk to people and try to improve the situation. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the presentation. I'm really looking forward to the new, uh, new uh, task manager, uh, Jan from MSF. Uh, we have been in contact already. Um, a lot has been said about the validation and data quality in the past few days, also during the hot summit. And I'm just wondering, there are the gamification features, uh, the user profiles with the badges and so on, but it's mainly focused on mappers, on those who are producing the, the, the mapping data, but not, uh, not on the validators. So is there any plan to motivate the validators to do more and, uh, and to give them some kind of feedback in the new task manager? Maybe let's just take also this another question quickly, so they can answer two questions at the same time. Uh, okay, thank you for the tasking manager. Uh, we just deployed the version 3 in Croatia and uh, is there an easy upgrade from 3 to 4 or should we kill it and start with 4 from scratch? 
Thanks a lot. Yes, about the validators, uh, the contribution timeline uh, also considers validation. Uh, and I think the badges come from the mismaps. But yes, yeah, so we can think more ways of uh, engaging validators as well. Maybe I can add that um, one part that is new, going to be new in a tasking manager for is the possibility to create teams. And those teams can then be added as validators to projects. So this is not like in going towards badges and, and like reputation, but it goes towards like actually organizing validators in a group and maybe like give the give the feedback and like the through through a human side. Um, but we definitely would like to also focus more on how to encourage validators to do better and to recognize their work. The question from. Uh, up to so, so um, the upgrade from three to two to four, um, you will not have any problems if you don't have any extra code. So it is in the same code base. It is within the Alambic migration. So there is like a con continuity. So it's not like a hard cut as it was between two and three. Uh, just a question here: um, Would it be possible for experienced mappers? to get uh, the ability to create uh, tasks without going through the, um, uh, you know, the normal kind of uh, channel? Uh, what I mean is, uh, would it be possible for experienced mappers to directly join and get the ability to create tasks? Um, so what we are having with the teams, so if, if you're an organization and there's enough trust on the hot tasking manager, then it will be easier for, for people to create projects because um, you don't have need like access to everything anymore. Um, but um, yeah, I think trust is here the important part. So um, at least in our, in our instance, um, we want to collaborate with people that, that know what they're doing. Um, so we do trainings for, for, for people that are doing project creation and, and, and um, um, yeah, make sure that this is going on well on that side. You are always free to install your own instance where you can do everything. Time for one last question. Are you all wanting to have coffee? Let's go for coffee. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.